Your sacking from Council of Ministers has come as quite a surprise to people outside Tinwald, especially given the budget was held only a couple of days ago. Was it a surprise to you? Um, it, it was a surprise when it actually happened on the day, and I, I, you know, I think it's dishonourable to do it the way, you know, if it was happening, and it clearly was because, um, you know, it's been stated that the conversations took place last week. Um, I would have certainly voted significantly differently. <laughs> so why do you think you were dismissed from Comen? Um, well, clearly, as I put in my statement, it's um, I, I genuinely do believe it's because I've been challenging around whistleblowing. I wanted to speak out about the KC right. I'd had correspondence with the Chief Minister with regard to that um, at the latter end of last week. And um, obviously he's told me he made his decision the latter end of last week and he, and he did state to me that, um, that I, I keep talking about whistleblowing and speaking out about whistleblowing. Well, it was a pretty clear position when I came into council. I said to him I would only go in if I could continue with that. Um, and I've always maintained that. So once I've seen the Casey Wright report, I wanted to speak about it. Um, I did write to him on the Tuesday morning before, you know, during the tumult session and say that I might um, want to speak on it, um, yet to receive a reply. So I respected the Council of Ministers' um, confidentiality and, you know, that you have to have permission from him before you speak, even though he'd, he'd accepted my pre-declared position. So I didn't speak on the actual day, but I'll get my opportunity in April. So. And what is the Chief Minister's problem with your views on whistleblowing? Um, I, t I just they don't like challenge. It would be, would be my first comment. Um, I've challenged it. I challenge challenge policy, uh, the way that we're handling things, and and that the culture change in government that's required following um, all of the reports we've had around um, where behaviours, Casey Wright reports, Casey Brunner reports, has been that the way that people operate and. Um, transparency, um, you know, good governance, good process. Um, I challenge it. I've always followed it um, during it, and that's the disappointing part. The, ho the whole of the situation in the last month or so with regards to the Southern Swim Pool, I followed all due processes. Um, you know, you'll be familiar with them. You know, in the Council of Ministers, you have to take papers to Council of Ministers for approval. They were approved. It was a joint report with the Department of Infrastructure Minister. And there was two, three ministers during the t period of the report, and um, you know, uh, I, I maybe was naive and I delivered the bad news. But we have to make some tough decisions fiscally, and I was being fiscally responsible for the people of the whole island, not just with regards to to one particular area um, that we support financially. How much? of your departure would you say was down to the southern swimming pool or would you say that's that's not really the main issue? Um, it became an issue, it didn't need to become an issue because suddenly overnight money was found from somewhere, well why wasn't the Department of Education advised that there was more money? It was an underwrite that was provided from Treasury and the Treasury Minister suddenly could find it once it was challenged and um, you know, I think it's a bit dishonourable to, to, to all of us really that suddenly that can happen Do you feel when you let there's a challenge. Um, yes, because if there was money there for an underwrite, it should have continued instead of saying to the, to the Department of Education that you can't, the underwrite's gone, um, and then there's a U-turn, so the U-turn actually came from the Treasury. This particular administration seems to be quite chaotic. Um, many uh, administrations will come and go with very few changes in the Council of Ministers, um, but you're not the first to go in this administration. What can you tell us about life inside the Council of Ministers? Is it as chaotic inside as it appears from the outside? I would say um, there's different personalities, there's strong personalities. Some people don't like strong personalities, don't like challenge against policy. Um, fractured would be the way I describe it. And do you think that the current Chief Minister has the confidence of members of Timbald at the moment? Um, certainly, my Onkin colleague has spoken out about that today, and he's he's you know put a poll out to the people of Onkin, and um, you know he's he's had similar situation and um, culture and the problem problem with behaviours and culture as as my, I have myself, and uh, there's a lot more than people know. It's you know this isn't isn't the first time, but culture starts at the top, 
and I think it's a very good example of the culture in Timwald of the way that I have been dealt with having delivered successfully within the role that I had for the last two and a half years, sticking to my principled approach on whistleblowing and, and reconfirming constantly with the Chief Minister I do have a pre-declared position. I shouldn't have had to do that really, but I did because that's a professional approach. Um, but certainly the way it's been handled um, I think has been very underhand. There's been emails um, that I haven't even seen that have been sent to the Chief Minister and then suddenly you're out of a job. Uh, it's a mini shuffle. I'm looking forward to see what the bigger shuffle is um, because we had a budget um, that was voted against on Tuesday and it's the highest number of votes against a budget since 1986, I believe. And I'm the one that's not got a job. So, um, you know, certainly I would be expecting to see some strong, tough decisions and strong leadership. We need to be fiscally responsible for the people of the island. Do you expect others are going to follow you out of the Council of Ministers? Um, well, certainly there's a shuffle. Um, clearly I'm not in the shuffle, but whether, he, whether the Chief Minister sh just shuffles or whether he makes changes um, will be interesting. But I find it difficult when you are actually delivering on everything and you can prove that, that you're the one that's not got a job and others uh, retain them. Um, but I'm looking forward to being on the back benches and challenging all of that. Do you have full confidence in the Chief Minister remaining in that role or would you like to see a change at the top um, so I hadn't for the rest of this administration? Yeah, I hadn't really thought about it to be honest till, till obviously it comes to, come to my attention from my uncle and colleague today and I thought actually there's some strong views out there um, certainly from the public way and here to represent the public and we have to have respect for, it, for each other um, but the public's view is certainly turning, it's changing and I have seen that in the last sort of um, 12 months really. Um, I, at the present time, I would have always supported the Chief Minister, but the way that he's handled this is not showing the respect and the statements he's gone out to the Manx public about changing culture. The culture hasn't changed and it's not changed at the top the way that I have been treated through this whole process. And you leave the Department of Education, Sport and Culture now. What would you say have been your achievements while you've been in that role? How have you made a difference to that department? I think being, a le being on the leadership team in a secondary school for 20 years and having that knowledge, experience, expertise, um, being able to work with colleagues, being able to um, nurture and change culture, and also um, stabilise um, the teaching profession and obviously en enhance their pay. Um, you know, I think that's one of the key achievements that have gone on for eight, over eight years. And you know, I've come in and within two and a half, well, within two years, that was all sorted and settled. And that was with help from Treasury, um, you know, to, to provide that funding. But is the funding enough for education at the outset? I've done my own analysis on that. I know it's not. Um, however, there's, there's some challenges we need to get, get over to sort that. Bringing a master plan forward for Castle Russian High School site, which everybody knew about over a year ago in February 23. It did always include a six-lane swimming pool. I think that's the uh, biggest step forward ever for a, a new school in the south. Um, I will be challenging ar around the east now. I've brought in um, a quality assurance framework for teachers. And these are all things that have to be fully negotiated through unions. And if you've not had that experience of how that, that operates, um, you know, it's going to be a, a difficult uphill battle and there are challenges ahead. Um, certainly open and odd well and I think that's great, uh, you know, and in, investing in that was a priority for me. Everybody goes on about children post-COVID, um, what we're going to do for them, their, their mental health, their wellness and well-being. Odd Wallens was the solution to that and I made sure it was invested in and uh, here we are successfully opening an outdoor learning centre which will be the envy of, of colleagues in, in the UK. I, I've met many politicians that have said you're so lucky to have that within that education um, establishment um, to be utilised. Sports, really important, really important part of schools and um, the NSC, massive offering. Uh, you know, I was fortunate to, to be part of the Island Games um, to, to Guernsey. Um, I went to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. 
everybody's envious of the facilities in the Isle of Man and the amazing athletes we bring out of it. And I said in my budget speech on Tuesday, you know, there will be an announcement shortly about the cycleway and uh, the naming of that. I've already approved that and that will come forward. And I think this is how we inspire our young people going forward. Arts and culture really important to the whole island community, but we need to maximise um, facilities across government estate and um, be fiscally responsible for the people and make sure that we are delivering what people, the people require at this present time and I'm not sure we've got that. Now obviously leaving the Council of Ministers it, it does put you on the back benches. Some would say that will give you more time to focus on some of your constituency uh, matters. Would you say that joining Comin has, has meant you've not been able to give time to the constituency? So what are your plans now that you are no longer inside the Council of Ministers? Um, so, certainly not. I've always, uh, well, I, you know, I hope my constituents feel the same way. If I've got constituency issues, I've always dealt with them. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not always highly vocal about that because you are busy as a minister. However, I've always dealt with them in the, in the right way. But um, the benefit that you have within Council of Ministers is being able to push forward and, and challenge any policies coming. Um, you know, and you, you, you can vote against, and um, you know, many times, I, you know, I, I have, um, and I always challenge for my constituents, no matter what role I'm in. Really looking forward to being on the back benches and being able to challenge um, on, from the outside. Uh, and, and particularly, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Chief Minister's new lineup is, because he's shuffling his states, so, um, and that's if he's still Chief Minister. And now you're no longer bound by collective responsibility what what do you see is coming down the road for the chief minister and his cabinet in the coming months tough decisions far worse than are required for a, for a southern swimming pool underwrite for for energy and uh, let's see whether people have got the, the, the you know the strength to go through with the tough decisions needed for the island to take it forward to the future um, you know, I'm very. I, I have. I have got concerns. Um, you know, we're spending more than what, than we're earning, and we need to look at this responsibly. I've always challenged the size and structure of government. I will continue with that. Um, you know, there's 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 a lot that I I want to be able to challenge, and I'll start doing that straight away. One of the things candidates all said prior to the general election was they wanted a smaller a more efficient government, the complete opposite has, has happened. Um, again, now you're no longer bound by that collective responsibility, would you still have voted for the budget that's just gone, which doesn't see any reduction in the size of government, in fact it signals quite the opposite, it signals expansion? I certainly wouldn't, no. Um, I've always challenged it. I think there's great efficiencies and effectiveness that can be achieved um, th throughout government. Um, I have to say education is, is quite finite and you know 320 extra students arriving in our schools that takes resources, that takes teachers, that takes assistants, that takes catering staff. So there are elements of the public sector that should be um, invested in. The structure and, and the spend profile of Alabama government needs a serious looking at and I'm going to do that.